Oh dear, oh dear, if it isn't the pesky consequences of my own actions. He was warned, he was told time and time again that this was going to happen, but Ethan Klein did not listen. The once fun and, dare I even say, interesting H3H3 has been going through somewhat of a fall from grace over the past few mm -hmm. years. I don't know how familiar you are. Uh, not particularly familiar, I've only heard thing. it tangentially. Honestly, it's one of those situations where I feel uh, I did myself a disservice by being a fan of his back in the day because my support, is, along with many others' supports, is just what led to him having the platform that he has now. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has been spending the past few years changing tune from his formerly anti-SJWAs and courting a whole new audience of leftists. And we know how reliable and loyal leftists tend to be. And he's even collaborated with socialist royalty, the multi-millionaire uh, real estate owner, Hassan Piker. And now, as always, the left has come to eat itself. Before I get into the actual substance of this segment, though, I'd just like to draw your attention to this article that came out last March. We've republished it recently with an audio voiceover for our Silver Tier subscribers by Hannah Gal, talking about no happiness in the absence of responsibility. And I think that's highly relevant one mm -hmm. because it's related to jordan peterson's most recent book beyond order and also that ethan klein is a man who isn't taking responsibility and certainly does not seem happy mm -hmm. that's for sure so the the focal point of this recent controversy has been one of the episodes of the h3 podcast most recently rebranded into h3 tv where he got into a little bit of trouble with his own fan base for making some quote unquote homophobic com uh, comments. We can see here Keemstar made a compilation of them that's okay. seven minutes long. Keemstar being Ethan Klein's greatest nemesis that Ethan has tried to cancel numerous times, including getting his sponsors taken off of him. Uh, so I just thought we'd take about a minute of this and show the sorts of things he was saying on a more recent podcast. And apologies for having to hear Ethan Klein in the first place. I don't do this lightly, trust me. Probably. He has some anal leaking. <laughs> Well, now, we were saying, well, if he's getting blasted in the ass hard enough, potentially, oh, no. you may need to wear a diaper. And a lot of you will say, like, okay, we've had a debate, like, I don't think vaginas increase in size from sex, but assholes actually do. If you have a lot of anal sex, That's you can true. actually blast open your anus. Frequent anal sex can result in a blasted it's open asshole. Content, <laughs> Maybe he's just got railed real hard the night before. Uh, bot he's, on he's a power bottom. No, that would... It, That's an option. Power bottom. So th wouldn't that mean that the diapers aren't for him, though? No, if he's on the bottom, he's getting railed. That He's an enthusiastic receiver. Oh my so god. He's gay. Power bottom is a guy who likes to wildly ride the peg of another dude. What are you saying that? Power bottom is a guy who likes to wildly ride the peg of another dude while he jacks you off until both have bone orgasms. <laughs> Yeah. Let's get down to the power bottom of things here on the H3 podcast. I love you guys so much, but y'all really need some LGBTQT. Why? What did well, I shut up? So that was a very highbrow discussion going on. For context, what they were talking about, if you want to move over to the next one, just so we can see the actual uh, thing this was taken from. Yeah, this was taken from uh, H3 TV number 31, where they were discussing James Charles, a former influencer who I don't believe has been relevant in the slightest for right. quite a long time, mm -hmm. wearing nappies for all of our American audience. That is the English term for diapers. Uh, Ethan joked that this may be because he's a bot because James Charles is gay and thought that, you know, and went on to that sort of discussion that they were going on right there. Mm -hmm. He was also having that discussion with his producer, Dan, who gets caught up in a lot of this. But while he was doing that discussion, his audience, which, as we all know, nowadays are leftists, were not particularly happy with the sorts of comments that he was making. While I didn't think it was a particularly funny discussion, while I didn't think it was particularly highbrow, I don't really take any offense personally with him making those sorts of comments. He's just speculating in a casual conversation with some mates. I don't want to defend him or anything, but I just personally don't see much objectionable about that. Uh, but the funny thing is that this is all after Ethan recently, I think himself, came out saying he had to wear nappies because of some of his uh, adult nappies because of his own health problems that he's been experiencing. And then, because they take calls throughout the show, a caller called in and had some issues with that. So let's see... Some of, let's hear some of the uh, discussion that he had with this caller. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, Matt. Oh, so, Matt, wow. what, what have I got wrong? Fair. I know often you feel inclined to describe someone where you think they might be a bottom. And I, I think that that's often a misconception, that, like, bottoms may be passive or the... Well, I just mean that he likes a partner. I, I just mean that he likes to take it up the butt. And, but how can you know that about someone? Well, that just was just a theory it. about because he was he wears diapers. It's just a theory. Oh let, no, but there have been times. I think I think one that comes to mind was maybe Jordan Peterson that you described as probably being someone that would be a bottom. That's okay. the only one I can think of off the top of my head. But like I've I've heard you at times maybe say like, oh, this is someone that might be a bottom. You can't always tell like who's the top, who's the bottom. So do, do you like, find it offensive if that... I say by being like, oh, he's a, he's probably a bottom? Is that the problem? To make absolutely, it's offensive. So Ethan, this is exactly what you wanted in the end. This is the sort of people that you were courting the whole time. The sorts of people you make a few jokes and they get very offended and feel the need to make their offense known. But to be fair. There is some questionable stuff that goes on here because Ethan starts to ask some rather inappropriate okay. questions, I would find. So let's let's play some of that. That's all I'm asking for is just be a little more conscious of it. I are, are, so would you consider yourself a top or a bottom or you don't do that la the labels? And I mean, this with all peace and love and with respect, Ethan, it's none of your business. But you have a it. preference one way or the other. But that's another dangerous assumption, too. Can I guess? Don't. Will you tell me if it's right, if I guess right? No. Well, you know what? I'm not going to get into it, Matt. But I, but I, we all know which one you like, you prefer. So, a bit of a weird line of questioning to go down. I know that it was kind of relevant and on topic, but the guy makes it very clear. I, I don't want to talk about my own preferences. He's like, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to guess anyway. And he does seem, as with everything he does nowadays, very bitter very mm -hmm. tired, almost annoyed at the idea that he's getting this pushback. And it's like, Ethan, this is this is what's been coming for you this mm -hmm. whole time. You seemingly didn't understand this. And he has to consistently throughout the podcast to reaffirm his allyship because that's all he has to do. He has right. to say, I'm an ally, I'm an ally. Mm -hmm. Because back in, I always feel that this seems to me to be a uh, reaction to the fact that back in the day he did court quite a, probably a more conservative or at least anti-SJW crowd with the fact that he had lots of anti-SJW content mm -hmm. and he seems to be going so far left uh, as an attempt to almost make up for that uh, to his more uh, to the audience that he's got recently uh, and yeah he does sound fed up and defeated and then later on in the podcast uh, him and his him and his producer Dan just start telling the audience to shut up and go away so let's let's hear that apologies to whatever his name was uh, apparently i was homophobic to him but uh whatever what can you do people say it was gross and disappointing saying you gross. can guess if matt is a power bottom by his voice is so gross but i was right that was the point wasn't i he admitted yeah of course you were right and honestly just so over these f***ing people shut the f*** up shut up and it's fun. a f***ing entertaining show shut the f*** up someone says i don't know what's up so with disappointing someone said I grow up jesus fucking christ Dan, Dan. i don't know what's up with ethan today but something's off bad vibes this episode shut the f up so unsubscribe go away <laughs> jesus christ it's so childish <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah it's so childish. i could almost feel i could almost feel dan mm -hmm. trying so hard not to just throw out an f slur which one is Dan? Dan is the producer telling them to shut the F up. Right. Uh, Ethan is the guy, is the uh, fat slob. Yes. Uh, sitting behind, chewing into his microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, he just goes on to the ultimate defense of whenever you know that you've, you're in the, uh, in the tip with mm -hmm. your own audience mm -hmm. and just says, eh, don't like it, don't watch it. I think some of y'all are way too f***ing sensitive you know? for the show. To be Just to be totally honest... Like, people in this thread who are saying they're grossed out and whatever, I think you're really, I think this with peace and love, you might be too sensitive to watch this show. If you're watching this show and you're perpetually offended by things I'm saying, you may want to just stop watching. That's how you know you've won the argument, isn't <laughs> it? When you just go, just don't watch it anymore, guys. Yeah. Uh, but the frustration is obvious, and Ethan, this is what you have asked for. If you want to just go back onto the actual page itself, John, I would just like you to just take the timeline all the way to the end of the video, just so we can see what it is that they end on. No, like right at the very end when they're finished. They just end on a big pride flag. 
to let you know that despite everything, they're still allies. That we're still on your side, guys. Uh, we might have just spent the entire past uh, hour, three hours making fun of you and telling you to go away, shut but, the F up, and stop watching. That's the conservative pride flag. That is the conservative pride flag. <laughs> but there's, there's just one thing I want to know about H3, uh, the, the podcast and everything. Why... I know you've obviously never watched it, and God bless yeah, for God doing help so. You here, I'm afraid. But why do people even still watch this absolute crap? They all have terrible mic etiquette. Ethan is constantly smacking his lips and belching straight into the microphone. They all sound so miserable and low energy. I just don't understand why people even still watch it, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. But uh, Well, isn't it the first mover advantage sort of thing, that he was one of the earlier people to get into the podcasting game, and so he attracted his following then, and simply due to the principle of mass, he's been able to retain I mean, he started his podcast at the, at the arse end of 2016, so mm. I don't know how early, so to mm -hmm. speak, that is in the game, but he had already built up uh, a dedicated audience by that point with his edited videos that he put right. on his old channel h3h3 H3 productions mm -hmm. and as a result so he was an he, early mover on youtube then or uh, relatively start? yes right. he built up a good audience and they just sort of tagged along mm -hmm. with him to the podcast and then over the course of the podcast a lot of those early followers dropped off when they saw that ethan was not the funny edited haha -ha man mm -hmm. that they had seen on youtube but instead this bitter dull boring person who seemingly mm. hates the fact that he has to appeal to people uh, in his in his content anymore uh, and now just seems honestly i don't understand why he doesn't just retire because he mm. doesn't seem to be getting any enjoyment out of it and certainly not when your entire audience turns against you as a result so for instance we've got this uh, we've got a few people after a whole segment where ethan mocks gay men for having anal sex someone commented politely and told them to think about the way they were talking about the lgbt community Dan promptly told them to shut up. Ethan swiftly agreed, getting really sick of this S. And this is what you should have expected. This is the audience that you mm -hmm. are targeting. If we move along, there's more people just saying to purposefully know and recruit a queer and gay fan base just to S all over them and perpetuate horrific stereotypes about gay men is a choice. H3 himself did respond to this on a follow-up podcast mm. and basically just said, I've not purposefully and knowingly recruited queer and gay fan base. Well, you have gone out of your way to show yourself as an ally, to show support, and then consistently say that you're moving further and further to the left. So you've got to acknowledge that that does come with these kinds of people who do just acknowledge themselves as being queer. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a bit of a facetious response that he gave to it. Uh, there's this well, hilarious- he certainly can be accused of pandering. Huh? Yes, pandering is probably the best, uh, best term for it. Uh, he then is accused of uh, this, which is, Ethan and Dan mocking the community, saying, how do you know we're not part of the community, is a right-leaning dog whistle to mock us. They're trying to disregard our feelings. They're not allies. When someone shows you who they truly are, believe them. So joking, a few jokes here and there, is now a right-leaning dog whistle. Once again, I don't agree with any of this stuff that people are saying, but this is what he asked for. This is the audience that he has courted and pandered to for the past two or so years, possibly even longer than mm -hmm. that. Uh, and then, of course, because he is his absolute nemesis, Keemstar's been having a field day with all of this. Uh, Keemstar trying to portray himself as the good guy in this situation mm -hmm. as well. Ke Ethan's lost his mind. I, Keemstar, you know, the bad guy, would never say any of this horrible stuff. I legitimately was offended, and I'm not even gay. Obvious BS. Let's be perfectly honest. This is Keemstar, but he's not missing the opportunity to... So, who, who is Keemstar for the benefit of viewers who are, haven't had the privilege of uh, encountering him? Keemstar is the host of a YouTube drama show called Drama Alert, where he reports on YouTube-based news, and he is often... So that's gotten... his career, right? That is his career. It's this sort of drama. Yes, and he has previously got into a lot of controversy, among other things, for saying things like the N-word. And Ethan Klein himself has accused him of some pretty heinous things in the past. And I will not say that Keemstar is like some angel or anything, but even among the bad things that he'd done, Ethan had vastly shown it out of, uh, out of context. He basically accused him of contributing to the suicide of a YouTuber called wow. Etika mm -hmm. for an interview that Keem had with him a month before he killed himself, where mm -hmm. Keem was like, oh, well, if you feel that bad about everything why don't you just take uh, why don't you just take that final step which is an insensitive thing to say but then a month later 
him doing something, uh, him actually committing suicide, I don't think is something that you can put full responsibility on Keemstar yeah. for. And as a result, tried to get him, uh, get his sponsors removed from Keemstar, which actually happened for wow. a time. And people were freaking out at this because it's like, Ethan, don't do Adpocalypse 2.0 or even 3.0 when you were one of the ones back in the day yeah. going against all of this. And even back in the day, Ethan Klein supported PewDiePie after he said the N-word on that stream, which mm -hmm. caused the adpocalypse. So Ethan has basically gone against all of his former principles. And there's just a few other tweets of Keem trying to take the, the, the high road in this situation. And then we come to Ethan's half-hearted Twitter apology to my LGBTQ plus fans. I'm sh sorry for comments on today's show. The sexualization of gay men and the grouping of tops and bottoms is a stereotype that I'll be trying to unlearn. Apologies to the caller too, who I shouldn't have pressed inappropriately. Hope you guys know I always mean well. It's almost a cookie cutter statement <laughs> at this point, isn't it? Oh, You've seen so many. Very much them. so, especially when you see his actual apology mm -hmm. on stream when they did the of course obligatory apology stream just scroll down so we can see if, if any of the like and de uh, dislike ratio on this you can see a million views mm -hmm. only 31 k oh you've actually got the dislike as well actually i was surprised that it was only 31k i thought the dislike would be a bit higher but mm. fair fair play but um well the dislikes here are only indicative but that's another choice that's since youtube removed the dislike button you now have to get extensions to yes. see them and they basically estimate what the dislikes are based on the dislikes of users who use Good those point. extensions Thank you very and much. so on so yeah so uh, they they do actually lie in this apology dan says that he didn't do the whole gay voice lisp thing even though he clearly did in that audio that we could hear uh they get angry they also try to fob off the anger and take all responsibility mm -hmm. off themselves by going, don't you understand? There's an anti-gay bill going on in Florida right now. How can you be angry at me? They are truly cowards. And then they just say this, which is going to make yourself seem like you've definitely not done anything wrong, or at least don't, you, you definitely know that you've done something wrong by your own standards. Like me and Dan, we're on your fucking team. There, if you don't think me and Dan are on your team, you have no allies. You have le you, there's nobody left to fight for you. If you think that me and Dan are, are actively homo, like, I, I, again, there's like, okay, I understand I, I can hold some, like, homophobic, uh, like, to say, oh, you think it's okay to make that joke? It's like, I get it. I, you know, I, I won't do that again. I understand that it was offensive. But you, you, this label of homophobic and racist, if you think me and Dan are not on your team, then you fucking, there's nobody on your team. There really isn't. He kind of has a point. It's true, but at the same time, how do you apologize to your audience who are very angry at you? Is you shout at them and tell them, without me, you're nothing. You've got no one. Is that really going to bring them back on side? Mm -hmm. And of course, it all... Well, is that, he's, I think, very ineloquently actually making a reasonable point there, which is that he's saying that he, could, he might be passively homophobic in the sense of having implicit homophobic biases, which is something that the left believe in, um, but he's not actively homophobic in the sense that he doesn't go out of his way to, um, to belittle and insult gay people or discriminate against them, etc., etc. While that is all true, and mm -hmm. I agree, his audience does not, oh, of course not, which is the important thing as far as it goes for his sponsors. Well, they, don't, they reject that um, dichotomy between those two things. Mm. Uh, which is one of the main reasons that they are so insufferable to talk to, because they view that having an implicit homophobic bias as being the same as like being a, someone who's literally lynched a gay man or, or thrown well, stones. Well, they, they, see, they see jokes and words as violence. So in making yeah. those jokes, for all we know, that, that Matt Caller might have gone and hung himself immediately after for the violence that Ethan had done to him by questioning him on whether he was a top or a bottom. Mm -hmm. That's how they view it. But then this happened. This isn't too far, it's too much. Sorry, Gary Stans. Today we have no sponsors because uh, uh, I am an existential threat to uh, gay rights and all progress. So, of course, our wonderful uh, fans have taken it upon themselves to read all of our sponsors and um, to have them. Uh, can't uh, not sponsor or not to uh, support us. So we are, um, I'm very, you know, I'll just say this. It's a gr I'm very thankful to our members 
it makes this show kind of uh, bulletproof to stuff like this, even though it's painful and emotionally. It just doesn't, it's just painful that, you know, people would do that. There it is. And, you know, the other thing is, like, you, you, you like, you expect a little more of the sponsors in a way, but I get it. There is, you know, it's just transactional for them. But, you know, I feel like I, I put so much into the good, our, our good partners, and it's kind of crazy when they just drop you like a bag of dirt one over some bullshit, but there you go. So defeated, isn't he? But with fans like that, eh? Mm -hmm. Who needs enemies? Yeah. If they're going to be the ones to call up your sponsors and get you cancelled off mm -hmm. of them. But, as I said, you reap what you sow. So, Ikeem Star pointing out that in 2020, Ethan attacked his sponsors, starting a trend of YouTubers going after sponsors. Now that mm -hmm. it's happened to him, he's crying about it. And there's the video from that where he does, where he does do that, which is the content nuke that he dropped on Keemstar a few years ago. I've got the link up just to the next one. Not got any clips from it or anything. But yeah, so the <laughs> it seems that Ethan is, still isn't in the good books of his audience, even after apologizing, then moaning on his uh, latest episode about how all his sponsors dropped out because his subreddit Apologizing is Apologizing still... never works to these No, people. no, of course it doesn't. It sh I think he would know this by now. But in the Reddit post, they, they're making fun of him again. John, if you want to move along. Yeah, the moment Ethan realized he was about to get cancelled again and again and again, which he should know by now. Uh, but this is interesting because Ethan was warned. Ethan was warned not even too long ago. It didn't right. take very long for his uh, for his chickens to come to roost. Mm. Because here's a video that we did in it did on it back in January 2017, talking about Ethan Klein betraying Jordan Peterson. And I'd just like to read some of the excerpts of what happened back then because Ethan decided to delete the videos that he had back in the day interviewing mm. Jordan Peterson where he said that he was an interesting guy, had mm -hmm. very insightful, and uh, because of the fact that he was basically signaling to his followers, see. I'm on your side. I don't even want to any videos of me associating with this man up mm -hmm. anymore. And Jordan Peterson had this to say in response. We had a good conversation. I enjoyed meeting you and talking with you. What, you, what have I said precisely that motivated your actions and your accusations? Deleting our discussion, an honest question. Mm. Finally, you might seriously consider providing me with the footage so I can post it. Also, I should warn you that those who engage in cancel culture generally live to regret it. Ooh. I'm not going to come after you, except politely in this Twitter stream, but the chickens will definitely come home to roost. You will be held to higher and higher and soon impossible to maintain ethical standards by the very mob you currently wish to please. Then you will make a mistake and they will devour you with glee. Please take this warning seriously. I liked you. You know, you knew this was coming, Ethan. It was only three months ago as well. Yes, only three months ago. And you should have listened, but mm -hmm. you didn't. And to end all this off, I thought I'd end up with Sophia Narwitz, who just says, getting some real bottom energy from Ethan Klein right here. And I think that sums it up, really. <laughs> If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the premium hangouts we do sometimes, this one between Carl and Thomas debating whether or not wokeism is, well, real socialism. And if you want to follow what else Thomas is putting out, you can follow him on Getter at at Thomas Dowling on Getter. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>